Yo, 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 yo. Today we are going to be playing in the Infinite Elixir Challenge with 3.0 Expo Cycle, and if you couldn't tell by the intro, this is inspired by Best NA. He did make a video on this a while ago. Sadly, he hasn't been around too much recently. But with the Infinite Elixir Challenge back around, I figured we might as well give it a shot. And so this is going to be kind of ridiculous, though, because it's going to be nine wins of pure chaos, seven times Elixir. Um, with this cycle deck is bound to go wrong somewhere, I feel like we could make some improvements to the deck, like maybe with the mirror or something to kind of get more utility out of the extra elixir flow, but we are just going to be using 3.0 Expo, I guess, and E-Spirit as always because of the Skeleton King, because of all the bait and the graveyards, um, but yeah, this could be pretty ridiculous because we could get spell cycled, someone could just rocket cycle our king tower, we might just be screwed, there could be many spell cycle decks that will just hard counter expo, um, but I guess let's get started, we're gonna see what we're in for here, and so I think, okay we don't have expo in our starting hand, I do think going expo first play is gonna be somewhat viable, because I mean, seven times elixir, how exactly are we gonna get punished? And so it looks like it's going to be Splash Yard. Um, so I'm actually just going to cycle back to another Expo here. Very aggressively. He has a Cannon Cart too. And uh, that... Okay, like, I'm leaking because I don't know how to spend all this Elixir. Um, I think I'm going to Defensive Expo next because I want to Expo again. But also, I don't really have space elsewhere on the map. And uh, yeah, this is just getting a bit ridiculous. But... He goes for a graveyard, so we're just going to cycle back to another set of archers, I think, to try and shut it down. Our defensive expo is actually getting decent value. Going to go for an offensive expo now, and then knight as well. And this might be a huge commitment, uh, but I think it could work, so I'm just trying to get a connection here. Unfortunately, we took a lot of damage on the left side, but we have hopefully outcycled his uh, cannon cart, and we do get a connection. That's going to be huge. It's going to go knight, and then... E Spirit to kind of retarget all of that, and then defensive expo. I can't really go offensive expo because there's a cart on the map, and yeah, like this is just pure chaos already. And our tower is already pretty low, sadly, like 800 HP, because he is just kind of poison cycling us out. We're gonna have to try and make an offense happen, but it is looking difficult. Um, and cannon cart is gonna be kind of annoying as just kind of a hard counter to expo. But yeah, I don't know why he has a cannon cart actually in this. Um, normally, <laughs> they're supposed to have like a knight or something less uh, aggressive, but I think I'll just defensive expo and uh, try and get back to another one. Now, this is going to be kind of bad because I'm going for an expo in the lane where he already has damage, so he could just like poison this and it would be kind of bad. But I'm trying to like go very aggressive, and okay, that was that was certainly not what I intended to do. I, that was a misclick, uh, that expo. But let's try and get back to yet another one, and I think we are... We actually got a lock somehow out of that. I don't even believe it. But we did sadly lose our uh, left side tower. So I'm actually going to be trying to like low-key spell cycle him out in the right. Um, and I guess we're... The sad thing is now that we're kind of forced to go expos uh, in the left here. Which is where he already wants damage anyways. But I think we, ha we have to try doing it because... Like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on, actually. But uh, I have, I think, officially succeeded in the spell cycle in the right, but I just don't see how we're going to take his... Uh, in the left, I mean, but I don't see how we're going to take his right side tower, sadly. So this looks like it might be a loss for our first game uh, of the match, which I'm not too surprised about. But it does kind of suck. Um, but honestly, I think... We could have won this if he didn't have the cannon cart. I don't really know why he had the cannon cart, honestly. Um, because it's just like a straight-up counter to XY. I guess it makes sense, considering it's seven times elixir. Uh, you don't exactly need the Valkyrie of the Knight. But anyways, we're going to try again. And we do have Expo, so I'm just going to go Expo, Tesla at the bridge, I guess. Because why not? And he goes for E-Golem. Okay, so Elixir Golem. I'm going to go back for another Expo here in the right and our expo on the in the left i mean oh my god there, the the pace of this is so crazy that i'm already getting confused with basic stuff but we're gonna try and cycle back to a fireball here and just try and spell out this oh my god there's so much on the map right now but we are back to another fireball i think so fireball is going to be amazing in this if you couldn't tell um he looks like he's back to another eagle one but i'm just like stacking the fireballs as crazy as possible and everything just kind of died so okay we have a huge counter push now, let's just go for an expo push. And uh, fireball the tower, because we have infinite elixir to deal with. 
And yeah, like he does have arrows to take out the archers, but I mean, between the fireball and the Tesla, look at all the Teslas we have up right now. We have three Teslas just on the map. Absolute chaos. Um, and I don't think we're getting a connection, but we can just, like, we have eight archers, is that right? I, is that, yeah, we have eight archers and all of which just died to arrows, so yeah, pretty ridiculous, but uh, from here on out, I don't see how we're going to three-crown this person, because we do have Expo. Expo's not exactly a three-crown friendly deck, but defense should be pretty straightforward. Like, for the most part, I'm kind of just spamming cards, honestly. Um, but I'm also just trying to get good fireball value. He's going for Eagolem's. Yeah, I don't think Eagolem works in this kind of challenge, because, like, Eagolem kind of works on the basis that you're going to... Uh, you're getting an elixir golem for cheaper than it's worth, right? Because an elixir golem is like only three elixir, but it gives back four, so it's kind of worth seven in a way. Um, but an infinite elixir, that kind of elixir lead doesn't mean anything because the other person's going to have enough elixir to kind of deal with the entire push, like pretty easily. And also, there should be like a lot of splash yard with bomb towers. Uh, like in the last match we played, I think that's going to be one of the best decks for this challenge. So I just don't see how Eagolem is working, but now I'm kind of playing on his side of the field, uh, just trying to three crown him if possible. But I don't think it's going to be happening. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I mean, we did get some damage off his king tower. Okay, now it looks like we're going to have to switch to defense because he suddenly has a ton of troops coming in um, here. I don't want to lose. Oh my god, I got drop glitch. Okay, that's going to be that's going to be terrible actually. Drop glitch because uh, in this challenge. Oh no, that actually might have cost us. Um, let's see. I swear if that actually cost us, that's going to be terrible. Because, like, there's not, there's nothing you can even do. Like you saw, it's seven times elixir, right? So, uh, you kind of have to keep on playing all the time. And I got drop glitch, which means like for like three or four seconds, I just wasn't getting any elixir. So, okay, great start. We're off to 0-2 in the challenge. Um, let's try and keep it going i guess even though this does not look great expo tesla again because why not and it looks like our opponent is going for a giant in the back and doesn't actually uh respond to the expo at all so okay he has a rocket in this deck um so i guess let's try and cycle back to another expo and let's try and not get drop glitch again even though like that's not really in our control whether i get drop glitch or not but i'm gonna try and like not place my cards too fast just because i really don't want to lose like that again. That was, like, just kind of unlucky. Um, it looks like it's going to be some kind of giant beatdown deck with Skeleton King, and uh, he's not going to have a graveyard. I, I feel like this kind of deck would have a graveyard, but maybe not. Anyways, another th another way I could have just won in that last match was instead of just spamming uh, on, this, on that side of the map, I could have just defended, because, like, I should have realized um, three crowning isn't exactly going to be a possibility against an eagle on deck when I have expo, like I can't exactly three crown with knight archers and cycle cards, even though I was trying. So I think just I could have set up like a million Teslas like I'm doing right now, and that would have been better as well. But I do apologize for you guys having to watch two losses right at the start of the video, but um, this should be a pretty straightforward win. I mean, the only way I can think of him getting damage on my tower is going to be rocket cycle, which shouldn't be a big deal because I'm starting to stack up a lot. It doesn't look like he has arrows or any other kind of troop like that. And uh, now I'm going to try 3-crowning again. It might seem stupid, but anyways, if I can, like, get his uh, rockets away from my tower and onto my expos, like, that's still going to prevent him from get making any kind of progress. Yeah, he's forced to rocket. I gave him a lot of value just now with my two expos for the rocket, but even still. And his giants are kind of just getting shredded, honestly, even though, like, giants should normally just fully counter an expo. Uh, my expo and my support troops are doing a pretty good job actually and now we might actually be getting close to a three crown yeah we do so we finally get a three crown which is a welcome change from the last two matches where we were the ones who basically got three crowned well in the other one i don't think we did but in the most recent one and that's gonna be ten thousand gold so actually they're being pretty generous with this gold um even in the last 2v2 challenge, I think they gave the same amount of gold rewards, like 10k gold for first place. Let's go Expo Tesla at the start. I mean, honestly, this play's kind of stupid, right? But it doesn't really have any downside in this format, because, like, I'm already at 10 elixir. But he goes for an RG. I'm just going to go back to a second Tesla, and how am I getting punished for doing that? And he goes for a rocket, but we have outcycled both 
it's funny when you say outcycled in a seven times format, but we have technically outcycled both his RG and his rocket. So my expo on the left should be doing work as I say that. I'm already back to a second expo in the right and a yet another expo in the right as well. Uh, so, and he should be like four cards away from rocket right now. Although he does have RG Pekka, which is kind of menacing. Um, but at the same time, it's fine because like, Archers do such a good job, if I can stack multiple archers, they will just easily take out, and if I can just set up this wall of Teslas like I'm doing right now, and I'm going to start spell cycling him. Yeah, he's going to start spell cycling me as well, so we definitely don't want to let him up spell cycle, and he just used a P.E.K.K.A., so maybe this expo can get a connection. I'm going to fireball the wizard, and he goes for a rocket, but we get some damage, and we do have a ton of Teslas on the map. Let's just get down another one, and yeah, he has RG Hog, so those are like his win conditions, I guess. But, and he actually does, Freeze is actually going to be a really good card in this format, honestly. Because, uh, it's like the only thing that can get value over time. Like, because you just freeze everything up. No matter how much Elixir it's worth, it's just frozen, which means it's not getting any value. Uh, so he just froze like four of my Teslas just now. That was a pretty good example of some freeze value. But anyways, we are going to be keeping up the relentless pressure um, on this other tower. And kind of try and force out rockets as they are getting forced out. And he has arrows too, so we're just going to keep up expos, and uh, he shouldn't be able to ever really break through as long as I keep up a strong offense, in addition to having some defensive backup as well. So I, I'm just going to defensive expo, just kind of preemptively. And now I can kind of just start to spell cycle, I guess, because offensive expos will kind of just let him go for P.E.K.K.A.s or R.G.s. But uh, if I go defensive expo, okay, I think... Okay, I almost let my expo get hit by the rocket there, but I thankfully didn't. So yeah, like, defensive expos, he can't really do anything um, about unless he rockets them, in which case he's not going to be making much progress. And he's just rocketing one tower. We've already taken both of his. Uh, but now I can go for an offense box because I, ha I have, like, four expos on the field. Well, three, I guess, but I have a lot of expos on the field, basically. And he's still trying to rocket cycle me. Um... So we're going to try and not let him get away with that. And he goes for an RG. And he's still trying desperately to rocket cycle as he does get it off. But we have two Expos on the tower. I do not see how he's going to hold off from this. And yeah, we get another three crown. Nice. At the last second. So moral of the story so far, at se it seems at least, is that 3.0 Expo is not very viable in the Infinite Elixir Challenge considering the fact that everyone is playing, what, RG, Rocket, Giant, Rocket, um, this Graveyard, I think I would actually beat Graveyard if I, if he didn't have Cannon Cart, but, like, all the heavier Rocket decks should be very hard, and we go against someone from CR Korea, um, and I don't want to, like, stereotype or anything, but there are a lot of really good Korean players that play Splash Yard. Okay, he, he has E-Golem instead, so just gonna Fireball the E-Drag. That's usually the only way you can take out an E-Drag on your side, is by uh, fire on on your expo i mean is by fireballing it because like it's gonna splash everything else so let's get another nice fireball and gonna be in a, in a similar situation as the last match against eagle but let's try and make it a better match this time by defending better and did he actually just give up i think he might have given up like okay yeah i was gonna say i didn't want to just keep spamming expos because last time we saw how that got me uh uh or sorry we saw where that got me i guess where i kind of just lost because i was I was actually ahead, but then I kept trying to... Okay, wow, he came back. Um, I kept trying to, like, make an offense happen, and it just didn't really work. But, yeah, I'm surprised he came back, I guess, after giving up and losing two towers. Maybe he actually disconnected and lost connection or something. That's another possible explanation. Um, but I guess we're still going to be trying to get this three crown, but I'm going to try and not be too overzealous with it. I'm going to try and also set up some defense so that if it doesn't work out, which I'm not really expecting it to work out, we will still have the defensive backbone to fall back on and not lose both of our towers like we did last time against the Eagle and player. Um, but I can actually just maybe start spell cycling his king tower. Seems kind of weird. And I, I do also need fireball for defense sometimes, so I think I'm going to alternate between fireballing on offense and fireballing on defense. But, okay, he is stacking a lot of musketeers actually, which is getting a bit scary. Um, so I think next fireball will be for all those musketeers. Nice. And Musketeer is like a card that's very solid, but not really threatening, right? Because it's just a very solid card. It doesn't exactly create an offense like the E-Barbs did in the other match. 
Like, I'd much rather play against Musketeer than Elite Barbarians. Um, but yeah, let's... Okay, he is starting to stack up a lot of stuff. This is where it gets a bit problematic. But this is how we lost uh, our tower last time. So let's try and pull everything in with the Teslas. Like, this is kind of scary, not gonna lie. But I think with enough fireball value, we should be able to survive and uh, try and not lose either of our towers here. And yeah, it's, it's mostly just the bat him stacking battle healers that gets problematic. Like, if he doesn't stack battle healers, like, there is really no concern. But when he does, that's when it gets annoying. And also E-drags, because again, basically the only way for me to kill an Electro Dragon is by double fireballing it. Um, so that's going to be pretty important, actually. As we are holding on for dear life here in the last 20 seconds, but I think we did survive. Um, and yeah, like he has a lot of annoying cards. He has the Firecracker, he has the Musketeer, and so I honestly think like arrows in in in, in this format would be very good, or just even in this deck it could work instead of the log. But you know, just to make it through Hino Expo Cycle, I think we are just going to stick with the good old 3.0, as much of uh, torture as it might be. But into the next one. And Expo first play, I think we're going to Expo first play all the time if we can. Just because, like, okay, he has a rocket, so... And he has a fireball too, so... But let's, we're back to another Expo, though, and... Oh my god, he mirror fireballed. Okay, so this is already looking very bad for Expo, right? Because he has, like, five spells. Um, yeah, this is looking very, very bad. But we'll see what we can do. He is... He has rockets. Oh, I think... We're going to have to try and go for as many offensive Expos as possible to try and deflect his attention from rocketing the towers. Uh, that's, like, gonna be our only hope, I think. Uh, and he also does have Mega Knight as well, which is, like, kind of a pain. Uh, but, yeah, like, as you can see, I'm cycling so aggressively, I'm already back to a second expo. But he does also have Mirror, which we have to be careful of. And Lightning, like, he has many answers to our expos. He Mirror Lightning's there. We're gonna go for another expo and try and fireball the Sparky. Hopefully it doesn't splash the expo. Okay, nice, it didn't. Um... And Knight Archers are at- so basically, like, I'm trying to divert his attention from my expo as much as possible, uh, so that he does not lightning- oh my god, I got drop, drop glitch again, nice. I really don't know why that's still in the game, to be honest, like, I would appreciate if they fixed it. Um, but, yeah, like, he's- his goal is to spell cycle my left side tower, it looks like. So as long as we kind of divert his attention from the left side with right side expos, I think we should be solid. We're actually winning in both lanes somehow against this ridiculous deck, uh, in spite of all his random spells. But I am kind of worried, right, because after we do take one or both of his towers, he will realize that he doesn't have any expos to worry about anymore, so uh, he could just start spell cycling towers anyways. Um, but anyways, we're going to go for another expo, and we are still in the damage lead uh, on both lanes. So far, and I am like trying to low-key spell cycle him back because he is spell cycling me. I'm not just gonna take that and let him spell cycle me. Also gonna try and spell cycle back, and I don't think defensive expos are gonna be worth pretty much anything because of the fact that he he just has so many spells that he'll just get infinite value. But I'm just gonna go for the fireball. That's gonna be uh, one log away from the left side tower, and now I think we can expo in spite of the fact that he has a mega knight right there. Uh, knight is thankfully tanking enough. And, yeah, Rocket was forced out, so let's just go for an Expo again, and just... Basically, I'm diverting his attention from my right side. He's still Lightning Cycling me pretty aggressively, but he mirror... See, like, he mirror Lightnings, and he doesn't even know that he can hit my Expo plus Tower with these spells. I think if he hit my Tower with, like, half of these spells, he would already have taken my right side Tower, but he just doesn't seem to know that, I guess. So with only 10 seconds left, it looks like we might walk away with this win against this pretty much impossible... Uh, matchup, I would say, but yeah, this is the story of 3.0 Expo in the Infinite Elixir Challenge in a nutshell, I guess. Um, so I would not recommend you do this. I mean, if you want to have fun, you could. I think like a, a much more viable version would be like with Firecracker um, and maybe Delivery and Arrows or something. Like classic 3.0 Expo does not really work out, and we are at two losses, so um, we are kind of on the brink of death here, but. Expo Tesla, you already know how it is, and he is... A lot of people don't actually respond to the Expo at the start, like maybe... Okay, it looks, it looks like he didn't give up or didn't disconnect, maybe he was just like... Maybe he did disconnect actually, or maybe he was just like kind of lagging or something, I don't know. But anyways, both of our Expos are on tower, and 
I'm kind of just trying to my, trying my best to play cards very fast while not just randomly spamming, like trying to have them have some of, somewhat of a purpose. And it seems like we took his uh, left side tower with ease so far, and it, I'm waiting to see what kind of spells he has other than the rage, unless this is actually just a lumberjack causing the rage effect. Or does he even have a lumberjack? I don't even know at this point. Like this, Oh yeah, yeah, he does, so I don't think he has a rage. I don't actually know what spells he does have, but if he doesn't have any big spells, that is definitely a consideration that he should have taken into account before playing this challenge, because like, I have four Teslas on the field right now. It actually looks really cool, honestly. Just the quad Tesla in the middle. Just eight, ready to destroy anything that comes its way. Um, but yeah, like it doesn't seem like he has any spells, so he's kind of just spamming troops, and they're just going into my defenses, and he doesn't seem to have a way to actually kill my defenses, so I have like... I just think I just fireballed nothing. But I think I have like 10 archers on the field or something at this point. Uh, just absolute insanity. But we are actually threatening... I'm going to expo now. It's been a while since I expoed. But we are actually threatening to take his other tower as well. If he doesn't do anything about it. Um, and oh, we took our first bout of damage against the witch. Kind of unfortunate, but uh, we are, for the most part, in a very good spot. And that should just be two fireballs and... Uh, sorry, one fireball and two logs on the right. And yeah, so actually... 3.0 Expo is bad in this challenge, but the one good thing about it is the Fireball, which, as you can see, is just getting so much value. I think what would be even better is a Poison, so that's why I think, like, Splash Yard would probably be the best kind of deck for this kind of challenge. Because you can just Poison an area, deny an entire uh, spot of the map for, like, 10 seconds. Or 8 seconds, I think, that's how long a Poison lasts. And uh, I think that it just gets so much value in this kind of format where they have more elixir than they know what to do with so having that kind of area damage and it looks like I'm getting a bunch of random drag glitches uh, but we are kind of just defending now because I definitely don't want to go for the three crown in this situation where um, he's still spamming me with a lot of troops as well but I think we were able to hold off from losing either of our towers here so very nice defense, um, a lot of random spam, but we it seems like we kind of bounced back, so maybe like I kind of found my mojo with the infinite elixir challenge, because like at the start I was kind of getting destroyed, you know. But now we are on a 5 win streak, then again, only half of the challenge is done, we still have 4 more to go, expo first play, you already know what it is, uh, let's see, and okay, he's... Like, ev everyone that I go against, they just don't respond to the Expo first play in time at all. So, oh, and he does have an Inferno Tower, unfortunately. And Electro Giant. Okay, so now we are in for a bit of a heavy uh, deck. It does depend on his spell. I'm going to go for another Log to kill the Sparky, though. Fireball that other Sparky. And, yeah, yeah, he hasn't revealed any spells yet so far. So, like, oh my god, he has a Golem, too. Okay, so Golem, E-Giant, uh, Goblin Giant. Mega Knight, you know, just your just your standard everyday match with Expo. Um, but I am just kind of trying to pull everything into the middle as much as I can. And it looks like it is actually working so far. So I'm going to try and divert his attention now with this Expo. I need to log uh, the Golem, and it looks like I actually missed my pull, but thankfully I got it back. need to log, and he's just ignoring my Expo. I guess he can, right? Because, like, I don't really have... He, he doesn't really need to deal with my Expo if he has all this random stuff on the map. Oh my god, this is getting kind of overwhelming, but I'm gonna try and go for another fireball and another Tesla, and my Expo has literally just been sitting there acting like a defensive Expo because of all the spam. Wow. Um, so, it looks like Expo first play is actually like the only thing that got me some damage in this match so far. Uh, I'm going for fireballs and stuff on the Sparkies because I don't want them to just one-shot my Teslas. Like, I actually definitely need value out of my Teslas here, and my Knights too. And, like, the Golem is just such a huge sponge tank uh, that's actually getting kind of problematic. Uh, but so far, he only has the arrows, which is kind of good. And I am also, by the way, slowly, like, log cycling his tower as, as slowly and surely as it is. It is still kind of working, and he goes for another arrow, so we need to get back to another Tesla. By the way, one thing that always kind of annoyed me, I don't know if it annoys you guys too, but when you log the Goblin Giant, it doesn't kill the Spear Goblins, and that can actually be kind of annoying. Okay, he has a Night Witch. He had a Night Witch the whole time, he didn't play it. Um, that is actually kind of annoying. I'm going to go for a Defensive Expo, I think. 
I think we need this kind of extra uh, defensive firepower, to be honest. Because, like, you saw my last offensive expo. It didn't get anywhere. It was literally a defensive expo. So, instead of going for another offensive expo, might as well go for defensive expo now. Now I think I can go for an offensive expo because I think, or at least hope, that I have this under control. Uh, I think I do. Yeah, I, I guess I do. Um, but we are actually slowly getting outchipped by his arrow cycle as well. Yeah, look. My two expos are literally acting as defensive expos right now. Like, I have not gotten a lock, and this expo has been down for, what, like 20 seconds so far? And it's just constantly taking away at his uh, excessive ground troop tanks. But looks like we finally got into a situation at the end. We did get a connection to finish off the match. Looks like we finally got into a situation where... Um, I was able to kind of hold off the onslaught and finally be in an elixir lead. So actually, like it seems very weird, right? But defensive expos might actually be a good strategy in this format because if they don't have a deck like this with no big spells, they can't actually kill the defensive expos. So uh, yeah, let's keep it going though, I guess, um, into the next one. And we are now two thirds of the challenge done at six wins out of nine. Uh, and okay, Firecracker. Mega Knight e Golem comes down. Firecracker is going to be very annoying, like I said. So it is just going to be one of those e Golem decks. Going to try and fireball the wizard away. Even though that might not be the right thing to fireball. Maybe I should be fireballing. Okay, he does have a lightning as well. Which is going to be kind of frustrating, actually. Um, because, like, it's going to be very good against Expo, obviously. But let's go for an Expo now. I think we have this under control. He does have a pretty annoying um, poison-lightning combination. But still... I do kind of want to make, and yeah, like, he has, he has all these firecrackers that are actually really annoying, like, I really wish I had arrows right now, um, because it would be amazing, but, gonna go for an expo, and remember last time he used inferno tower on the expo, so gonna try and predict the next inferno tower, yeah, looks like he get, went for a lightning, but still went for an inferno tower afterwards, so definitely was worth it to, uh, try and predict the inferno, but I don't really see how we're gonna get a, get a connection in this matchup, honestly, because he has mega knight, He's lightning cycling us, and uh, he has all the answers, it seems, so let's try, though. Let's try and make a connection happen against this Mega Knight, and it might be good for us to try and force out uh, lightnings on my Expos in the right, as opposed to on my uh, left side tower. But then again, the Firecrackers are so annoying, my god, and I just can't kill them, honestly. Like, I have to double log them. I'm actually going to log Fireball this Firecracker uh, and the Inferno. And Mega Knight is sadly on my tower. This looks like it's going to be a loss, unfortunately. I mean, I don't really see what we can do. He has uh, Eagle and Mega Knight, which I would actually be able to win. But he does also have the unfortunate combination of Poison plus Lightning. So, like, no matter what I try and defend with, he's always going to be able to just Lightning Cycle us out. I mean, I'm not going to give up, obviously. I'm going to still try. But it is looking like some Dire Straits right now. Um as he is starting to get to work on the spell cycle on our right side tower. So, yeah, I'm going to go for a knight, um, but I I don't see. I'm kind of losing hope as I keep playing, right? Because he's just going for constant mega knights, uh, eagle lums, ba stacking battle healers. I think I'm just going to try and get that uh, left side tower for crowns, but I've kind of resigned to the fact that I'm probably not going to be able to win this match. Yeah, so we are... Cycle back to another log. Let's just take the tower and move on, I guess. Like, I... This is kind of the problem um, with 3 Pinot Expo Cycle. You don't have a good way to kill these annoying Firecracker. Like, Firecracker is honestly one of the most annoying cards in the game. I think a lot of people... For a lot of people. But even for Expo, which seems like it wouldn't be. Because, like, if they just protect the Firecracker, how do you kill it? You have to Fireball. That's going to be an extra Elixir commitment. And I obviously could put arrows in the deck. But I don't want to, like, not use 3.0, you know? I'd rather just try and stick with 3.0 the whole time, even though I am putting myself at Handicap. And I do have Pass Royale Privilege, so I am going to be continuing for free. Um, and, okay, Bowler e e Golem. I already dislike the looks. And Golem. I I genuinely dislike the looks of this quite a lot. And Mirrored Golem, too. Just, and Clone, just because why not. Um, but I am going to, like... Okay, he has an Earthquake. That's going to be bad, actually. I think that's the first Earthquake we've seen all day. And that is going to be very bad. Uh, a very bad sign because earthquake for only three elixir it'll act as kind of like a lightning uh, gonna expo and try and make a connection happen but i mean it's infinite elixir i don't see how yeah and he has a bowler too oh man this is looking really bad um 
and he is going just to be mirror earthquaking us to like spell cycle us out which sucks but if earthquake is only card that can uh get tower damage maybe i can defend it doesn't look great but like maybe i can try and spell cycle him out oh my god golem is getting closer to my tower that is very scary i think my tesla on um in the middle was a bit too low there and uh gonna go try my best just kind of like playing everything but he is gonna earthquake this is looking like it's gonna be another loss okay uh, you know what guys honestly speaking i did want to use it with x through pinot expert cycle at first you know like uh, pay tribute to best in a um try and win with expo but it looks like it's just not happening against all these um heavier earthquake golem e golem decks so what i'm going to do is i am actually going to switch up the expo deck a bit don't worry i'm still going to be playing expo because i obviously want to win the challenge with expo but through for no expo just looks like it's going to be way too much of a handicap to deal with so let me think of some changes first and foremost i think i definitely do want a set of arrows instead of the log log is honestly great but arrows is kind of like a better log for only one elixir in terms of the offensive value it's going to get next up i'm going to put a firecracker in because it's going to be very good i'm going to put a valkin because it's also going to be amazing and i think i'm going to put a royal delivery in as well um to deal with all of the ridiculous uh golem and e golem like spam pushes i think this should be a much better expo deck for us to work with but let's go for expo first play you know just because i changed the deck does not mean i'm going to refrain from my good and trustworthy expo first play so uh yeah like it's already looking like um firecracker is going to be amazing in this in this match and okay i didn't think he would hog right there uh, but that's going to be kind of my mistake and it, it does feel a bit weird um, not being able to log stuff back but already i can see that my opponents are having some trouble killing my firecrackers and that's going to be a huge benefit for me so oh yeah by the way fireball arrows kills an e-drag so that's going to be a huge uh that's going to be a huge kind of interaction to know and really help us out in this uh mode and also arrows is like i can low-key spell cycle him out with arrows and it'll do more damage than the log that's for sure and firecrackers are just doing great work. Delivery's doing great work. I feel really good about this expo deck, to be honest. Uh, like, I feel like this matchup I could have won with 3.0, because it's not, like, going to be the insane golem, um, like, random golem, e-golem, rocket kind of deck. But this deck is just way better on defense in this kind of format. And, yeah, I think it's going to be much better. So, I'm going to expo in the opposite lane now to pressure up. Because we're basically already, we basically already took his left side tower. Let me just uh, arrows to close it out, and he missed the fireball on my expo. That's going to be huge. By the way, guys, the triple elixir tournament is coming up, and I am probably going to be playing expo in it because I always play expo. Uh, but I'm thinking about the best deck to use in it, right? Because like back in the day, I would have said uh, expo with mirror is the best deck, and I honestly might play expo with mirror again because it's like such a good deck in triple. But the meta has changed a lot since back in the day and i'm not sure if like firecracker valak would be better in triple it actually might be like i'm using right now because since i played the deck i it kind of gave me ideas about triple elixir um the f tournament starting right and i want to be able to show you guys the best expo deck for the tournament so i through pano could work a uh, queen bow could maybe work by the way speaking of queen i do think archer queen um is going to be decent in triple elixir but i don't think it's going to be amazing because you don't get much value out of the ability like you just don't look at that delivery value by the way and this person is going to ha have quite a hard time dealing with my firecrackers unless he has arrows of course he does but still firecracker going to be an amazing card against any giant and look at that delivery i'm so glad i put delivery in the deck it's just going to kill literally everything like this is exactly i think what you need to be having for infinite elixir this kind of deck right here with the Valk, with the Firecracker, with the Arrows, with the infinite kind of crowd control possibilities. Um, Expo's on tower, back to another Expo opposite lane, and even though it's annoying, yeah, like he's giving the wow, he's just astounded at our deck. So yeah, I, I think I might have made the perfect infinite elixir deck uh, with Expo guys. So if you want to, feel free to try out through Pinot Expo Cycle, but ever since I switched to this, I have been having, a l I mean, it's only been like two games so far, but this like looks just beautiful and amazing, and I genuinely think uh, like Firecracker is the move. Like archers are just so bad, honestly. 
Like, archers are very bad. Um, and Firecracker is very good, honestly. It's like a very annoying card. People dislike it for obvious reasons. By the way, even in like non-Infinite Elixir, Firecracker can be a very solid Expo support card because of the fact that uh, you can also use it to get damage. And again, the pretty much the only downside of Firecracker is that you can activate King with it. Um, but we're playing Expo, so really, who cares about King activations uh, as we're playing from our side of the map? So, yeah, just... He has the mirrored witches, he's spell cycling us, I'm spell cycling him. Life is good. Uh, like, this is where it gets a bit weird, right? Because I can't often expo opposite to pressure. That's usually going to be a play. You don't always expo to try and take tower. Sometimes you want to expo just to divert their attention from a push. So that they're forced to split their elixir. I can't really do that right now because he, I've already taken his other tower. So now, you know, he's starting to catch up damage-wise. Um, but I still think that there's no way he should take both towers. And I'm also going to, like, slowly spell cycle his king tower. And by the way... Arrows have such a huge uh, spell radius that uh, they are going to be... That's another reason they're better than Log, in this case at least. In a lot of cases, honestly. And yeah, like, his E-Giants are going nowhere. Pretty much his only tower damage is going to be from those arrows and poisons that he's throwing down. Which I'm perfectly fine with. And also Valkyrie, definitely better than the Knight in this format. And yeah, he's going to try and 3-crown us right now. That is just not happening. Like, I'm sorry to say it. But that's just not going to happen. Our defense is way too good. Look at that Firecracker value. Just unbelievable value. Firecracker is such a good card. And yeah, I think we have found the best Expo deck for Infinite Elixir. Uh, so that is going to put us at 8-1. and one. one more for the final match. Let's try and make it a good one. And what do I say? You Expo first play in Infinite Elixir. So let's do it. Uh, for the final match, you know, nothing has changed. He has Giant Skeleton, Mega Knight, Lightning, so already looking actually pretty bad. But I still think we can maybe make something work. He has a Balloon as well. Um, so Arrows should actually be pretty good here. Because, yeah, it's like Arrows plus Delivery is an amazing spell combination. And he seems to be kind of short-sighted right now because he is, like, playing... Okay, he finally decided to defend in the right side. I was going to say, like, he's completely just defending and going offense in the right. But he is just uh, not... Defending my expo on the left, but sadly it looks like he was able to defend the expo still. Um, gonna have to try and make a push happen somehow, which is gonna be very hard considering... Yeah, like, our deck is gonna be solid, but still gonna be hard in a situation like this, where they have the lightning cycle uh, and everything. But we're still gonna try and make it work, you know? Uh, try and cycle... Like, our d defense is gonna be perfect, honestly. It's really just the spells that we aren't able to deal with much. By the way, another option, maybe I could put in a rocket in this deck um, to try and spell cycle better, uh, but I still think Fireball is going to be better. It's just going to be kind of tricky in this kind of matchup, honestly. So this is looking like it could be a potential loss, sadly. Uh, yeah, Mega Knight does unfortunately jump on the, onto the tower. We are kind of overloaded, and I guess the only downside of Firecracker is if they have... Um, a arrows, uh, like arrows heavy deck where Firecracker gets infinite value, but uh, still they have enough big tanks to kind of stall you out, and then they do have the arrows. So yeah, it looks like it's going to be a loss, sadly, against the Mega Knight. Even the Valkyrie wasn't enough to hold off the onslaught of Mega Knights, but honestly, I do think that uh, our main issue was really just the lightning, honestly. Like, if he didn't have the balloon as well, by the way, that would have been a pretty solid uh, defense. I do think Rocket would have also helped us out in that match, but at the same time, you saw how valuable Fireballs were against the Eagolem decks and all of that. I think Eagolem is going to be a very popular deck. So, anyways, we are 8-2, and two, uh, make or break in this challenge, and I know I kind of lost five times, so I do apologize for that, uh, but still, and yeah, like, right there, we get some pretty good Firecracker damage. Um, Fireball Arrows will fully kill a witch, and he is going to have Graveyard. We do actually get an Expo Connection, very nice. He does have an Earthquake. Okay, so Graveyard Earthquake. Uh, Arrows is actually going to be pretty good against Graveyard, though, to be honest. Delivery should be pretty good against Graveyard, too. And now it's time to go with the opposite lane pressure I was talking about. He's just going to keep on uh, spamming us in the right, and we can't really let that happen. Uh, like, we kind of just have to build some pressure, or else he's just going to be attacking us forever, and we don't want that. We want to try and make something happen. Looks like he is going to let the Valkyrie hit his tower in the left somehow. 
But our expo is just permanently occupied by all this spam. Um, so actually looking like another difficult match, uh, but I still think we can win. Our expo sadly just died, honestly. And Wow, I guess Graveyard is going to be kind of a weakness uh, for this deck because we don't... Like, Arch okay, honestly, Archers wouldn't be doing that much in this either because of the fact that uh, Archers kind of just would have died to his arrows and poison pushes, honestly. But still, okay, Valk is on tower. Like, we are not out of this. We are taking that left side tower indirectly with the Valkyrie, obviously, not with the X1. But still, now that we're in a, a two times in a tower trade situation, going for an Expo is probably not going to be very wise, to be honest, because he is just going to have a Mega Knight down. But looks like he's going to be kind of short-sighted anyways and just go for... He's not even trying to defend my Expo, actually. He's just trying to three-crown us. So I have an idea, actually. I'm going to try and get a Valkyrie down in the pocket, maybe. And oh my god, Expo's on tower. Okay, never mind. Scrap that idea. Let's defend this Expo with everything we can. I don't think he realizes that the Expo's on his tower. Um, he finally did realize, but that's a little bit too late because that is so much damage. Let's go. We finally got the connection. And now... We are going to have to defend with our dear life to not get 3-crowned by a Graveyard deck. Which sounds funny, right? Because imagine getting 3-crowned by Graveyard. Like, Graveyard and Expo are similar in that way, where they're both, like, decks that basically thrive on one tower games. Unless you're talking about Giant Graveyard, which we don't talk about Giant Graveyard, though. Um, and yeah, he is letting the Valkyries go to work on his uh, King Tower as well. So I'm actually going to go for another Valk on offense, and I think... Low-key Valkyrie might be a pretty good win condition in this deck. Uh, and Firecracker as well, by the way. I, I did also already mention, though, Firecracker is very good at getting tower damage, and yeah, that's going to be the three crown. So, you know, at the start, I was a bit apprehensive of this matchup. Like, okay, we are kind of getting steamrolled here, and we're going to lose. Uh, but we were able to finally win with my own custom homemade Expo deck, and I do believe this is probably going to be the best Expo deck for the Infinite Elixir Challenge. Um, Queen could also work to give you a 3 card cycle, but it doesn't really matter, honestly, because you're going to be cycling so fast anyways, and the Queen ability will simply not get you any value, because there's so much troops on the map, or so many troops on the map, and also the fact that they ha all have lightning, or poison, or all sorts of spell combinations that will probably take out uh, your stuff. By the way, this Golem matchup, I think I would have won uh, with my deck, because he didn't have any way of killing Firecracker. And Delivery plus Cracker would have just taken out basically everything. But yeah, that is going to be a very nice win in the Infinite Elixir Challenge. Unfortunately, I did lose at 6 out of 9 uh, wins, so I do apologize for the loss. But, you know, we were playing through Panamaxpo Cycle. We were kind of uh, getting it done and just seeing how exactly uh, the kind of deck performed in the challenge and then kind of adapting as we went along. But I think... I have probably found the best expo deck for the Infinite Elixir Challenge. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Kind of a long video today, 43 minutes in spirit of Best in A. Uh, by the way, he I think he kind of like quit. Uh, I talked to him a while ago, and he still sometimes comes online on Twitter, but I think he's focusing a lot more on real-life stuff right now, and hasn't really played the game much. I also haven't seen him online uh, in quite a long time, I think. Um, let me see. Takasuji, I think is his name. Yeah, he hasn't played in quite a while. Uh, six days ago, so he's still playing, like, sometimes. But, uh, yeah, he's, like, he's obviously kind of inactive on ladder and everything, so he is, he is, like, a still a big inspiration. I don't think he's gone forever. I think he will come back, uh, but he's probably just focusing on school right now, maybe his final year uh, of high school before he goes to college and everything. But I don't know too much. But, yeah, in the spirit of the... Uh, in spirit of best in a, today's video was Expo in the Infinite Elixir Challenge. Hope you guys enjoyed it, because that was honestly a wild ride. But, thankfully we were eventually able to make a deck work, which is this deck, and win the challenge. So a lot of nice gold to be won in that challenge. And I will probably max Firecracker next, just in spirit of that. But yeah, that's going to be the video, guys. Uh, feel free to try either 3 Pinot Expo Cycle or the Expo deck that I made out in the challenge for yourself or if you don't want to suffer do yourself a favor and not play expo uh, but yeah thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video take care and i will see you in the next one